Hey, welcome to Clarksville Vibe, the show, the show where we tell the stories about people here in Clarksville, Tennessee, who make this place the greatest place to live in America. I'm your host, Kevin Kennedy Jr., grew up here in Clarksville, went to Austin Peay State University, went away to dental school and came back and been practicing pediatric dentistry here in our community for about 12 years now. I'm really excited for today's guest. Uh, she is a representative of the museum, something that my family has enjoyed for many years, decades probably, and is one of the event coordinators for one of my favorite events that comes around once a year, which is Flying High. She is Channing Grimes. She is uh, taking a new leadership role and continuing to make a difference in our community with the impact that the museum has. We're going to talk a lot about the museum, what it does and why it's cool and why families should check it out. And we're going to talk a little bit about Flying High. But before we do, make sure you hit like, subscribe. Uh, you want to go back and check some other episodes, find some people, names that you might know, names that you might not know know we brought great stories just like you're going to hear from Channing today of different people who are making our community really really special so Channing thanks so much for joining us I'm really excited about this thank you I'm really excited to be here it's yeah. an honor yes uh, we are recording this August 2024 we're getting ready for the 40th anniversary of flying high that's that's right we are we are so happy and we're just really excited we've got a big crowd lots of sponsors and lots of memberships yeah so this is the museum's kind of staple event for the year and now you may not think that i think that is what it is it's one of those like you try to figure out when the flying high date is in january or february go ahead and mark it make sure you don't schedule vacations that's around right. that time because it's one of those cool events what do you think about flying high makes it so special where the event continues to grow and you've got people, let's say my parents, who have gone to it for, let's say, 30 plus years. Right. And now you're capturing the next generation, us, who exactly. kind of grew up with babysitters while our parents went flying high. But now we're choosing to go as well. What makes it special? Flying high has been going on, obviously, for 40 years. We are celebrating it this year. And what makes it so special is... Debo's and Jean Gilbert and Rachel Cotham, they decided that 40 years ago that we needed a fundraiser to help the museum. And ultimately, that's what this does for us. And it brings all of us together and to commemorate that the museum is helping us and they're just adding value to our community. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it helps all of us. And the museum is such a gem. It is truly brings us all together. Yes. Yeah. And it connects generations. And I think that's what we're like really seeing now. You know, when you mention those names, it's like, yes, I know them. They had to have such an impact in our community. Uh, and I'm glad they saw the vision for that. One of the things that I've liked about Flying High is uh, over the years, uh, there were times where the location would change. And then there are times where like right now for the last uh, maybe two, I don't know how many years, years, last yeah. three years, it's been at the casino there in Oak Grove. Correct. So you kind of get the feel where I feel like the museum and the event planning community really does just kind of ebb and flow with the event, you know, with the, you know, surge in attendance that might come. Of, of course, we had some some altered years there with COVID. We're, you know, not sure how things were at that point. But I remember it being outside. I remember it being inside at different places here and there. Correct. Yeah. We weren't sure. In 2020, We I actually was chair that year. And oh, wow. um, we weren't able to have the event. And so in 2021, I walked in with Morgan Knight. And we were able to host the event. It was at the air airfield. And we pulled it off. And everybody. Oh, that was at the airport. A airport, I yes. do remember that. And yes. everybody showed up. I mean, yes. it felt like everybody. Because we were ready to have a party. Everybody yes. wanted to get out. And they wanted to come out and support the music. And that was the biggest thing that people wanted to do. They were ready to support the museum and all funds go to the education programs and the exhibits. Yeah. And I think that people don't realize that the museum is a complete nonprofit. So we only get some funds from the city and then the rest, we do all fundraising. So Flying High is our biggest fundraiser of the year. Yeah. And without the support of the the membership without the support of our guild who help to throw this big event on um, it takes us a complete year 
to put this entire event on yeah. um, from start to finish. It is the next day, the next business day, we start planning the next flying wow. high. I know yeah. it is a, is it a lot of, process. you know, because I, I'm not a part of planning events. It is not my gifting. <laughs> I appreciate all the work you do. It drives me crazy to host a dinner and think about the pressure that I feel to make something special for people. So event hosting with hundreds of people, I can't imagine doing it. But I would imagine that there's like some debriefing stage where you're kind of talking about, hey, what did we do last night or last week that went really well? And what did we try for the first time that was like, that did not turn out oh, what we thought it was gonna there be. There is a post, a pre, there oh, is all, all of kinds yeah, of meetings. Funny. And the guild, they're so wonderful. It's a group of 12 women. And when you put these these brilliant minds who are so great at decorating, at planning, and this year our chair of Flying High is Christina Clark, okay. and then you have um, the art is Beth Mabry. She has just gone above and beyond, all of them have gone above and beyond gathering the art and putting this fantastic venue. It's going to just blow your mind yeah. on how beautiful it's going to be when you walk in. It won't even look like a grove gaming and raising. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know that I know this, the answer to this question, and I don't know that anyone's ever told me, but do you know why it's named Flying High? Um, I, is that just something that's It is that actually stuck? a, they took it from, they went to another event, I believe out of town. Okay. And so it was a, rather than um, create something out of, you know, recreate the wheel, it was a copy and paste. Yes. Well, Hey, so, that is my life. Yes. I don't have a creative bone in so, my body. So when things are, <laughs> look like I created it, yeah. I probably got the idea from somewhere. Rather than recreate the well, I love yeah. that. Yes. So they got it from somewhere else. Yeah. So Donnie and I moved back to Clarksville probably 2013-ish. And uh, she came here to play soccer at Austin P. We moved to Memphis for seven years, then came back. Well, as you know, 2014, 15 comes around. It's like, we're starting to like re-imprint ourselves in the community here. And I remember her asking like, what is flying high? What is, what is that? And now it's kind of one of those where it's like, we're looking in months in advance, trying right. to figure out where, where and when it is, what, it, let's go ahead and get, you know, get it on the schedule so we won't plan something else. Um, but it's, it's just a very cool event that we always look forward. Last year was the disco theme. Um, yes. James know. Bond theme. We've yes, had so many had things. So many. We've been really theme heavy this year. It's yeah. the museum at 40 since yes. we're celebrating that so it's just very much we're trying to maintain it's just very simplistic but celebrating the museum and keeping it cocktail attire it's so yeah. funny that you say you know thinking about our parents going and us having babysitters I just remember dad and Sharon going and them coming back and having pieces of art and now I look and I'm like well what beautiful pieces yeah. they have still to this day. And I just Well, you know, know what my dad always talks about? And this is his knucklehead self, but it, he always talks about the auction. Yeah. You know, That's that right. is the and KK senior thing. You know, it's sometimes he's got interest in the piece. I think he bought one that Terry Cochran he, had he made. He got that last year. Last year, year yeah. Um, and then sometimes, you know, he's just trying to get in to see how much he can raise the bid and raise right. more money, but not really win. <laughs> not really. Uh, and you he know, got that piece last year. He's done that he's before. Spent quite you know, a bit of money uh, last yeah. year. <laughs> so it is, uh, it's fun to, you know, to see as a kid, as a, as their kid, them have something that they just still, you know, really enjoy. Yeah. Um, but that does kind of bring me to my next question of, you know, you're a kid who grew up in this community. I grew up here. I remember field trips going to the museum, then kind of hit teenage years and college at Austin P and dental school. I didn't go to the museum for let's say a decade. What do you feel like was kind of a, a reinvigorating passion for you that would lead you down this path to start volunteering regularly at the museum and then that turns into a position and then right. now you're working there and this is your full-time thing. So it's, it was so funny because someone reached out to me and said, hey, I'm volunteering at the museum. And uh, like you, I went there for field trips yeah. all through elementary school and I was like, the museum, what? And she said, yes, you've got to come and volunteer here. And I, I'm a part of the guild. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, you really need to get active and be more seen out in the community. And I was like, oh, okay. She said, well, you kind of have to, you know, 
be asked to come. So you'll you'll come yeah. to the guild meeting and then they'll ask you back. And I said, oh, okay, well, I and I showed up and it was so beautiful. I walked through the museum and introduced myself to a lot of people that I had known but hadn't seen sure. in years. Absolutely. And that was kind of the part of it. And then the next thing I know, I'd been coming every single month and attending all these meetings and planning champagne and chocolate and helping plan flying high and getting to know the staff and getting to know Frank and Frank and I had been seeing each other on a regular basis and Frank and I went to lunch one day and Frank said hey do you need a job (laughs) and I said well well (laughs) It's a great way every interview (laughs) starts, right? Yeah. Yeah. I said, well, well, are you offering? Yes. Yeah. And he said, yes, I am offering you a job. And I said, what what is my job? What are you offering? (laughs) Yeah, what what exactly am I doing (laughs) before I sign this deal? Yes. What are we doing here? And, you know, Frank and I always got along so well. And he is just such a wonderful mentor. Yeah. He has such a passion for art, history, and, and and people around him. And he has just kind of put me under his wing and has said, okay, well, you didn't do so great at this, but we're going to get better. Oh, nice. And, and it's kind of like speaking at Flying High last year. He said, okay, well, we're going to slow this down. And so since I didn't do so great at speaking last year, I mean, I did okay. But I talked. Come on, Frank. It was good. I yes. did speed talk, kind of like how I'm doing now, which <laughs> reminds me I've got Frank in the back of my head, him saying, slow down. <laughs> Him saying, slow down. And him taking me to different places throughout the year to say, we're going to get better. Mm -hmm. And this is how you get better. And that's what great leaders do. I mean, when you hear about multi-generational leaders of people preparing people for their next step, it it is the coaching. It is the mentorship. It's I love you and I care about you enough that I'm going to say, hey, you did a great job. We're still gonna give you another opportunity. This is where you can improve. Let me help you get there. Let me show you the roadmap of how to get to that next spot. And that is what he has done from the moment we have sat down for that lunch. Yeah, I I have a very vivid memory. My kids, um, when they were a little bit younger, they're nine and six now, but when they were in that like four to, you know, five and three stage, they absolutely wore out the downstairs grocery shopping area in the kids in the kids museum. I mean, it was one of their if we had any extra time, let's go down there and do it. And Frank comes walking through one day and he recognizes me. And, and of course, like we don't have this long standing relationship, but it was enough that he knew I was and I knew who he was. And I just said, thank you for keeping this as a staple down here, because sometimes we forget that these preschool age kids or young elementary school age kids really are establishing memories and routines and things like that. And what to me is like, if we're going grocery shopping again, like (laughs) how about we go to the real grocery store? They just absolutely loved it. They would ask her babysitters to go there with mom, with me, with both of us. It was just one of those amazing things. And he and I really shared a, a great conversation down there. And I think it just revealed to me his authenticity and his humility of no, I'm not walking around here as, you know, the big bad executive director. And I'm not sure what his title is, but, you know, I'm not the boss. I'm here to serve. And I'm, he was just thrilled that kids were enjoying that space because I know there's so much work and effort that goes into keeping that for the kids while you're also doing all of the elegant and the, the really nice things upstairs downstairs still has a lot of value it sure does and he has put so much into the entire building and he thinks he's a part of every single project which is great and i mean he just puts his whole self into everything yes and that that's the great part about the museum is we can sit down as a team and you can have an idea and bring it to the table and then we can collaborate on something and then marketing gets a hold of it and then marketing will make this beautiful idea and then Frank gets a hold of it. And then what you've come up with has now bloomed into something so beautiful. Yeah. And it's just great because then you're a part of a wonderful team. And that's what the museum is. And yeah. it's just artistically creative beauty. Yes. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I would I want to give you the opportunity because I, I feel like, you know, with our 
just exploding community. There's so many new people that come here and our median age is really low. Like I, I saw a stat the other day, 37042, which is kind of that tiny town into Northeast area, exit one area. The median age there is 29 years old, you know, which is lower than I thought. I knew we were like mid thirties, but that specific zip code, you know, pretty low. What would you say to someone who has never been to the museum before mm -hmm. and doesn't really have a history of going to museums, but when you read the top 10 things to do in, in Clarksville on these random articles or the blog posts or whatever, the museum is always mentioned. Right. So how would you kind of pitch it to someone that just has never been, doesn't really have a general interest in art or history or things like that? What makes our museum unique and something that you would say it's always worth the trip? It absolutely is. We are museum for all. And I think people have the stigmatism that we have, we're very expensive. People have this stigmatism that, oh, it's just kind of just out of our league. And we're not. We have a Blue Star Museum that is from um, Arms Day and Military Arms Day to um, Labor Day. And we have the military discount. We are so military heavy here. And um, we try and accommodate that for everyone. And we also are very populated with our school systems and we have, we offer so much for our children. We don't just offer that just for our children. We offer exhibits for, um, art exhibits. We have history. We do stuff for, um, let's see, uh, Sorry. It always blanks when I know. you're recording. When, it, when it I'm sitting here, I'm like, I'm yes. blanking. Um, the We have a great education curator. Her name is Stephanie Stafford, and okay. she does these um, 3 p.m. Sundays. Sundays at 3, excuse me. And she does different talks. And then we have, uh, they can be people from Austin P. They can be um, our studios, Sarah Spillers. We do paintings uh, with Sarah Spillers. That's offered by Sika. And those are free classes. <laughs> you don't even have to have a membership I to join know. those. It it's is, crazy. It is crazy. It's crazy the free things that we offer. If you just walk in our door, and then if you pay a $12 admission to walk <laughs> into our building, we even offer that $12 back towards your membership, I which is $35. Yeah. And that's just Which, for to be honest, moment. like these days, it's like le it's less than Jersey Mike's. Right. You know, <laughs> thirty five dollars or fifty dollars for a family membership that you can come back any time of the year for your entire family. And I didn't know this, but my wife told me the other day with our membership, we were wanting to go to Discovery Park, which is in like Union City. There's also all of these like ancillary benefits. That's your that reciprocal. Through, yes. Is that yes. what it's called a reciprocal? That's yeah. right. Because <laughs> I'm glad she was paying attention. I had no idea. Your membership allows you to go to all these other museums across the state and nation. So it's just so wonderful that you have that ability and people just don't know that. They don't recognize that. And you can go to the Frist. You can go to Cheekwood with your membership. Yeah. And that's free. Yeah. So. Cheekwood is a botanical garden. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would call it. I don't know. Yeah. Is that what you would call it too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in, they do the In pumpkins. Nashville, kind of like West Nashville. They Nat do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, my wife will wear out some Cheekwood. Yeah. You know, I kind of told her, it's like, I'm good for one trip a year, you know, right. <laughs> maybe two if it's like Mother's Day, you know, but like, exactly. you know, she will, because they, they do great stuff there with, you know, different flower exhibits. And like you said, the pumpkin festival. And it's like, there's always a theme. And, right. you know, she's, and she's all about it. So even just... The admission, the, the amount of money that you would save by doing other things in the Tennessee area. Exactly. Our local museum is really the gateway to really experience the those. The membership that. receptions that we offer that has free food and wine. <laughs> I'm like, hello, that pays for itself. That's right. Yeah, which is why we need flying high. Exactly. Right? That's probably what helps keep membership costs really low for right. average families because otherwise... You, those costs do have to be paid from somewhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about, you know, I know that like at your core, you know, you're kind of a, just a servant hearted mentality. You know, that's what kind of got you interested in the guild. Yeah. I'll show up. Yes. I'll serve. Yes. I'll take right. the job. Yes. I'll, you know, plan yes, this event yes. and plan that event. Um, what is it that <clears throat> like, how, how do you feel sometimes taking that servant hearted kind of step, you know, you, you've got kids at home, you're always kind of saying no to something to say yes to something. How are you finding in this season of our life where we're 
getting that constant tug of like, I really want to go and, and serve the museum more and do things better and maybe join in on this committee or that committee. But I'm also feeling this tug because you're still normal mom, you right. know, how are, how are you finding to navigate that now? Um, it has been really hard, actually. It has been, you know. Yeah, tell me how to do it, please, because you know, I don't know how to do it yet. I think that is something that has been, actually, I'm going to be very honest with you. I had to have a um, someone sit down and talk to me about that, and it was a board member. Okay. I know. And, and it wasn't a, Channing, I'm going to have a conversation yes. with you. It was... She came in my office. It was Brendalyn Player. I don't know if you've met her, and if you haven't, you need to. She Sounds like I phenomenal. probably need to pay her for a therapy and session. She, she's great. She's a board member. I did Leadership Clarksville with cool. her, yeah. and she's doing a TEDx at the museum on September 19th. There's my plug. Oh, nice. And, and she's going to be one of the TEDx people, and there's nine other of them, and it's oh. going to be great. Is this live? It is live. Wow. Yes. So t uh, let's talk, talk about that more. A TEDx event here in Clarksville. Here in Clarksville. Live. Yes. At, at the, the museum. museum. I didn't even know about it. I, amazing. Amazing. You know, on my bucket list is like to do a TED talk. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Oh. I don't, I don't, I, it's too to late to sign up, up now. Yeah. We need <laughs> like, to get him signed up. If somebody gets sick, call me. <laughs> right. We'll have, call kid, him. We'll, we'll have the kids full on the schedule Josh at the Ward. pediatric dentistry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Calling Josh Ward. All of a sudden, Ward. Josh gets the flu. <laughs> right. <laughs> Calling Josh Ward. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Josh gets the flu and I stand up. Hey, this this so, is my bucket list. I, get, I did it. Exactly. <laughs> so, Brendan sat down and she said, you know, we're not only, we're not only, at the museum working together, doing leadership Clarksville together, we have become really good friends. And I appreciate her advice at work. I appreciate who she is as a person. She's just a phenomenal person inside and out. And she said, I'm gonna ask you a question. And I said, yeah, sure, what's up? And she said, who are you? And I said, what? And she said, who are you? I was like, um, I know who I am. And she said, who are you outside of this building? Mm -hmm. And outside of being a mom. And that really just like got to me. And she said, I don't want an answer. I don't want you to answer me. I want you to think about that for a little while. Chew on that, let it marinate and get back to me. You don't even have to give me your answer. I just want you to really think about it. And I said, okay, yeah, I will. I went to dinner that Friday night <laughs> with some girlfriends and I sat down with them and I said, ladies, who are you? Yeah. Like, we gotta I need figure to know, this out. Right, I need to know who you, who yes, are you girls? Yeah. And y'all tell me who I am. <laughs> right. I was like, who are you? Like I, sure. I go into work. I love my job. I wake up every single morning and it is the best place that I want to be every single day. And I love my kids. I love my family. And I know in my heart that I just, I'm thriving. Yeah. And that question threw me for a loop. And I think that if you cannot define who you are as a person and professionally and personally, then you really need to take a look in the sure. mirror. Sure, yeah. And, <clears throat> and at my age, if your career is defining who you are, then you've got a lot of questions sure. to ask yeah. yourself. Yeah. And, and Brendalyn did me a favor that day. Yeah, and I, I do think people our age, I turned 40 this year, um, it, you do kind of feel like, oh man, you snap, you snap your fingers now and it's not a four year degree. It's a 10 year gap. And it's like, right. you just feel like those, those times goes on and you snap your fingers and, and I'll be in the next season of life and my kids will be graduating high school. And if right. I don't really do the hard work to kind of define who I am and what do I want to be about? What do I want to pursue? Then you do just get caught in the rat race and it's, it's really easy to do that. But I'm glad you mentioned, you know, family, family is, Obviously, one of the reasons that brought me back to Clarksville, um, <clears throat> you know, as Kevin Kennedy Jr., I, I, I kind of get this privilege to carry on a legacy of someone who's a big personality in our town and has done great things for a lot of years and our lives are somewhat connected through your dad. Right. Um, he was always just really so kind to me. Um, I told you before we started the episode, my dad used to drag me to the courthouse. It was either like you play baseball, I'll give you that as a gift. But if you're not playing baseball, you're either with me at the courthouse or you're on a weed eater. So I always chose the air conditioning, right. you know, whenever that was possible. Very smart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> chose the air conditioning and, and, and you're, dad was always just really kind to me whenever I'd see him at events. Um, what do you, like, how do you feel some of that weight now of, you know, 
Channing also exists as this person who is continuing both for your mom, your dad, and yeah. then advancing for your kids. Do you feel any like, I don't want to say pressure, but sometimes I feel that pressure of like, right. I'm caught in this middle. I'm not a really a young adult professional anymore, but it's now my season to really step out and influence our community and take risk and make sacrifices and do things that help everyone. Right. Someone once said, oh, you've got big shoes. And I was like, there are no shoes to fill. Mm. And because I am my own shoes and I look forward to my own shoes to walk in. And my dad was such a pillar in this community. And he taught me so much and much like my mom. And they, my dad's words just constantly ring in my ears. And, you know, he was such a servant, like you said. He had a servant's heart. And I know that he not only loved his family, he loved, loved, loved this community. You know, talk about someone, me, who loves waking up and going to work in the morning. That man loved waking up and going to work in the morning. And that's what I compare myself to. You know what? That is what I want to be. I want to wake up every single morning and love going to work in the morning. I want to wake up every morning and love my family, much like he does, did. And and that's very important to be successful in loving others. And that's exactly what he did. And for my mom, she's just been so grounding in faith in God for me. And she's been very grounding in reminding me to have faith in myself. And that is just the most important thing that I have had to remind myself because trying to compare myself to either of them. (laughs) Yes. You, you get past that point where you realize Uh, I'm not that person. Yeah. I've got to stand on my own two feet. I did it. I did do it for a little bit. Yes. And there for a little bit, some people would say, this is Ray Grimes' daughter. And I was like, oh, no, don't do it. And and it is an honor. Yeah. It is very much an honor. But at the same time, I have to say, I am Channing Grimes. Sure. And I'm I stand on my own two feet. I can do it. Yes. And, yeah. and for those who don't know, if you're listening to this and, you know, Ray Grimes was a, a longtime member of our legal community. He was a judge uh, and sat on the bench for I don't know how many years. I don't remember him not being a judge. Um, so, it, you know, it's just kind of always Judge Grimes and, and was as kind of a man as you could have ever imagined. You know, Thank even you. when you think of that Thank idea of a much. judge being stern, sometimes I saw him in that role on the bench and he was still so compassionate. And I think one of his legacies, even when you talk to uh, someone like Judge Goble now or, you know, some of the other judges that are on the bench, his legacy of the 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 drug court is, is an amazing legacy. And some other things that he did to impact change from that bench, uh, was incredible. You mentioned in the, in the follow-up guide or in the prep guide, (laughs) follow up, follow up, follow Follow up. up. I didn't know what that meant. What does that mean? (laughs) He, he would always say, follow up, follow up chaining with people. Oh, wow. You need to follow up or did you do this follow up? And you know, it's really funny. And my mom has taken on that role and she doesn't even know it. And I've never even told her that. And she's probably going to watch this and and she's going to be like, what? And (laughs) I didn't see that. Right. She's, she has done the same thing and he would repeat things, follow up, follow up, follow up. (laughs) He, he would do that all the time and he would mean it as, Follow up with people. If you talk to them, send them a thank you card. Yeah. If if you need to pay something, follow up. Yes. You know, make good choices in, in the things that you do. That right. He was so big on that. He would always say, it doesn't take much to make good choices, Chan. Mm-hmm. And m- my mom has now taken, and she doesn't even, again, yeah. she doesn't realize that. And she says... She'll send me random text messages. Did you do blah, blah, blah? It's so funny. And she told me when she worked for the Center of Disease Control that she would go to different counties across the state that she had to start making a notebook of all the people Mm -hmm. that she has met. And believe it or not, I've started doing the same thing because I've met so many (laughs) people across this area and across the region for the things that I've been doing. And it's just, it has helped me unbelievably because I've been able to follow up with a thank you card, with a thank you email, with, 
you know, making sure that I'm making notes. And that's all I hear in the back of my head. Follow up, follow up, follow up. <laughs> Does it ever make you wonder what your kids are going to say that you're repeating to them all the time? You know, oh, yes. because yeah. it, it, it does. I, like, of course, my dad has crazy sayings and he's got stuff that was impactful and intentional. Um, but there are things where I'm like, what do I say to my kids now that they're Absolutely. going to at, you know, their mid thirties, early forties yes. say, Oh, my dad used to always say this. Yes. Without a doubt. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure Canon hears make good choices, make good yeah. choices. Which Canon, your son is like legit stud golfer. Thank you. Yes. He, like, he's golfing right now. Is he really? Speak. Yes. He's in Chattanooga with the golf team CHS. So he's, oh, that's so fun. Yeah. And now he's, like just starting high school is that he's about in, he's a sophomore, sophomore. This yeah, year. A, yeah i knew he's an underclassman i guess that's the word i was looking for um but it's it's also fun to watch our children and the children of our friends kind of step up into that you know late elementary school middle school early high school right. stage and you know there's a there's a wide range there right. But it's like they're becoming their own people and they they're really succeeding are. and having accomplishments of their own. And it's not, oh, that's just Channing's kid. And you're not just right. Ray's daughter. Like you're stepping into new roles. Um, <clears throat> and the last thing that I, you know, kind of wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about, I know you just mentioned it, but you're getting to connect with so many people, right? Yes. And to someone who's maybe new to our community or someone who, let's say, is kind of in their their 20s and maybe grew up here and has decided to stay around. What advice would you have for them on the value of pursuing and maintaining those connections? Because I feel like if I could do anything to 15 year old Kevin Kennedy Jr., it would be to shake him and right. say, you have no idea, but that kid sitting next to you in second period English and the kid that you're running with doing polls outside of the Rossview baseball field, and that person who is the sister of whoever's in your youth group, you're going to eventually impact the community with these people. Right. And the connections in this community specifically, I think whether it's old blue blood people like us who've been around here for decades or people who are just moving to town, decide to come here from California and really make our community better. The museum is open to you. These events are open to you come make connections with people like us because we want to keep making our community better and your gifts can add value to things. So what would you say to those people who are maybe a little bit nervous or shy about broadening their connections? Connections, connections, yes. connections. connections. Follow, up, like follow, up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Connections, connections. <laughs> <laughs> those connections are so important. And I think that when we have them available to us, just like you said, if I would have talked to the girl in second period. Yeah. And it, the museum offers that at every single reception. Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. And I tell my son, he he can be the biggest introvert. And we talked about that yeah. before we started. <laughs> introvert masquerading that, as right. an es extrovert. And, and I tell him all the time, make friends. And he says, I'm in a sport where I don't have to make friends. <laughs> And, I, I, and he is. He says, I'm not out there to make friends. I'm playing golf. Yeah. And I tell him that, no. Yeah. Get out there and make friends. Have yeah. fun. And he's just not a talkative person. But it is so important for new people that come in and the people that are already here. The museum is just a perfect place for that. Yeah. You're making great connections, whether it's friends, new friends, old friends. And I am privileged and honored to be there every single day because I get to meet those people. Yeah. And I know that without the family that I have, I know without the friends that I have, and without the coworkers that I have, it just, yeah. I wouldn't have such a great system uh, and support system. Because even those members, those new members and the old ones that have been coming in, I've made friends out of them. Mm -hmm. And it's just so pleasant. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just a pleasant place to be. Well, I am, very grateful for the museum. Um, my family has really enjoyed its benefits, um, you know, especially in the last five years, you know, where my, my kids are at that age where they just absolutely love it. And I, I think young families who aren't familiar with the museum really have no idea the type of value that they could get something right, right downtown. Um, this is one of Tennessee's most photographed buildings, it is. right? It's an yeah. amazing piece of architecture that is, you know, the city really takes great pride in. And when you see our city uh, marketed and advertised, right. often the museum building is one of those things that 
um, is is used to show our our unique dynamic thriving downtown right. um, and you've got people like Frank who Frank Lott who's just you know an amazing leader of that getting out in the community and making sure that people know the benefits Absolutely. of it but I'm really excited as this like older millennial to see people like you step up into leadership there too because I know that events like flying high champagne and chocolate the TEDx event, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're going to be involved with, it's going to continue to make our community better. And it's going to continue to connect people in new ways. And it's going to continue to believe what I think is making Clarksville the best place to live thank in America. You. Yeah. So really thank good. you so much for your time. This has been super fun. Hopefully it was easier than you thought it was going to be. It was, I was super nervous. That's right. I was like, Oh gosh, I'm going to blank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but everybody great. does great. The easiest thing to talk about is yourself and things that you're passionate about. And I think it's really clear and people will, people will realize that when they listen to this, that it's something you care deeply about. It's something that you're deeply involved in. And I hope that they hear that the museum is something that really we should all care about. If you love our community and you want to see it succeed, then the museum is one of those things that's going to keep allowing us to have new opportunities. Right. When you walk in, you'll know it's the heart of Clarksville. Yeah. From the beginning to the end, honestly, with yeah. the history, the art, the love that's inside. You yeah. just can't unsee it. Yeah. Well, thank you to you and all of the museum staff. Um, I know I've got some familiar faces of people that I went to school with and people that have recognized me coming back with my family and things like that. So shout out to you guys. Thank you so much thank for your you. effort. But if you have made it to the end of this episode, thanks so much. I hope you heard a lot about Channing and her story, her passion for the museum, heard about flying high, uh, Look at tickets for next year. The next year after that, it's an event you really won't uh, regret coming to, experiencing, and being a part of. You'll make those connections that we were talking about, making our community better. Go back, listen to some other episodes. Make sure you kind of have a way to catch the new ones when they come out every Friday. But thanks again, once again, for making it all the way to the end of this episode. We will see you on the next one.